gentlemen. Lily, how are you? Hey, good. Hey, I, I didn't. I just saw the annual review pop up. Uh, yep. And uh, but I didn't get a chance to look through it. So I, um, no, feedback would be super welcome there. It's it's always nice to go back over the year and realize just how much we've accomplished. Um, I really, you know, it's the natural human thing. You focus on the problems at hand and it's very productive most of the time, but it means, means that you're just focused on, okay, what is it that I have to get done that I haven't gotten done yet? You lose track of all the stuff you have done. Yeah. 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 You lose the perspective. Um, yeah. Um, nice. Well, um, as a side note, as we wait for people to join, I'll say that I consider much like a, a presentation, like a PowerPoint presentation where people will, where it's like easily possible to overuse animation and have it be distracting, that uh, the same is I think true of, of uh, one of the calls that I was on yesterday where, the, where another Docker captain had a Top Gun playing as a video in the background of their Zoom. And, uh, and we didn't want the meeting to end because we wanted to, you know, finish the movie. But um, it's just, I think it was overdone is the point. I think, uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, yeah. So hopefully uh, for the folks representing Kuma today. Yeah, there it is. Okay, Nikolai beat it to, beat me to it then before I could even, all right. Representing, very good. Cool. All right, fair enough. We, we are a couple minutes after. I anticipate we'll have a few other folks joining. I uh, uh, invited a, a few folks that might, uh, that might be interested in today's topics. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. So one is that this is a, a CNCF uh, SIG network call. And so we meet uh, about twice a month. Um, as such, we, the meetings are recorded and publicly posted, so um, use swear words as you will. Uh, on that, hopefully everyone has a link to today's meeting minutes. I'll post those in the chat. Um, in general, just uh, for some of us that are either new or haven't been here before, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and share those minutes, but I'll also say a couple of other housekeeping things, which is, and that is, oh, that we, we uh, are, you know, I've generally been able to keep a cadence of about two topics uh, a meeting. Um, that's, uh, I think we could squeeze in more uh, into the meeting time, although I don't know that us as a SIG could necessarily digest more. Um, and so uh, in some respects, I think today we're fortunate that Ambassador, that, that's uh, coming up for review soon. Um, they, they won't present today, but uh, next time we meet. Um, I anticipate that um, Meshery will also be presented probably the next time that we meet. So, so we'll have a full agenda for the fourth. Um, getting into the agenda then and off of housekeeping items. <clears throat> um, Last time we met, one of the topics was the discussion around the formation of the Service Mesh Performance Working Group. And so uh, the presentation that we covered last time is available. And this is kind of an, an open call for those that might be on this call or others that you might know of that would be interested in that working group to, uh, to jump on in. We'll be identifying uh, a routine meeting time soon. Uh, would you consider presenting this at the SMI calls? I think that next week there is a call for the SMI group. So, uh, possibly, yeah, that's a good thing to mention that, that there's uh, folks that are clearly interested in service meshes there, so they might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, next item was, is that Chaos Mesh has been presented um, a little over a month ago, I think, um, here uh, for consideration into the sandbox. And so their review is in flight. 
Ah, nice. Uh, we've spent a healthy amount of time with, uh, well, with that whole team, actually. Not, 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 not everyone, but, but all of the, most of the maintainers. And so um, uh, my hope is, is that we'll have this review done this week for Chaos Mesh. That's a timely review in that Litmus, we've also spent a lot of time with um, Litmus Chaos. Um, even though they're not being reviewed in this SIG, that group, that community has just uh, been spending a lot of time over, uh, over here as well. And so in, in a very good way, we've got, there's a lot of chaotic things happening. Obviously the term mesh is already very overloaded, like too many things are claiming to be a mesh. I don't. It's, it's gotten quite meshy. Meshy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in good company. This is good. This is great. Oh, what a mesh. And then, uh, just as we uh, welcome in, um, well, so Nikolai's been here for some time, but some others that are on the call for the first time. So, Marco, good to have you. Uh, and then, if you haven't put your name down, feel free to record your attendance. But other than that, um, we've got a fair bit of time on today's agenda for. Kuma, and I'm going to stop sharing so so that uh, you guys can introduce this to the project and uh, tell us what it's all about. Yes, um, thank you, Lee. Uh, my name is Marco. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Kong. I am going to be doing this presentation today. How much time do I have? Let's say over 30 minutes. Like we, there was to be two presentations today and it's cut down to one. So we'll, we'll have ample, ample time. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen right now. Uh, can you see it? It's there. Yeah, um, so I'm presenting Kuma um, today uh, as part of the uh, donation proposal as a CNCF sandbox project that they've started a month ago. So this is the issue 437 on the CNCF repository. Uh, this is the PR, I'm sorry, and this is the issue 436. Um, as a matter of fact, you can also find a link to the presentation that I'm going to be presenting now on this issue as well. Um, you know, when we look at, uh, at the industry, when we look at the CNCF landscape, today, there is uh, no control plane built on top of Envoy that supports Envoy as a data plane proxy um, that's open, that's vendor neutral, that the rest of the community can use um, in, um, you know, from CNCF. Uh, there, are some, uh, there is another project uh, that is graduated or incubated, uh, Linkerd. Uh, it's not built on top of Envoy. Envoy, um, it is really, um, you know, in the industry is being adopted as the data plane of the future. Um, and today, if somebody wants to leverage Envoy, they either build their own control plane or they go use another control plane that supports Envoy. And like I said, today in the CNCF landscape, there is no vendor neutral donated control plane that the community can go to in order to do that. So we built Kuma and uh, we want to donate Kuma as a sandbox project with this goal in mind, giving everybody the best control plane out there built on top of Envoy and also integrating with the rest of the CNCF landscape in order to allow everybody to simply implement mesh across pretty much any architecture. So what is Kuma? Uh, Kuma is a service mesh uh, built um, in Golang uh, on top of Envoy it has been released in September 10, 2019 by Kong. It has, um, I think we're like about 1500 stars on GitHub. It's an Apache license 2.0 project. Um, Kuma, it's a very simple project. Uh, it supports Envoy. It, it implements the XDS API of Envoy and uh, it supports uh, Envoy out of the box. It, it is one executable. So developers or architects who want to create a service mesh, they will start this one executable that is the Kuma control plane. And then they can go ahead and um, um, then start the data planes and the data planes will connect with Kuma. And then from there on, Kuma is going to be controlling those data planes. It's written in Golang. 
It provides a native Envoy integration and really has been built with extensibility in mind. Um, Kuma has uh, came out uh, of Kong with, with the learnings that we have captured from the users and the customers even that, that Kong is working with in pretty much every industry, technology, financial industry, healthcare, and so on and so forth. Um, it, is, it was clear from uh, the service mesh landscape uh, back when Kuma was released that there were some, um, some missing aspects that today were not taken care of by any other service mesh out there. So first of all, for many organizations, service mesh, it is a journey. Um, organizations are working towards transitioning existing workloads to Kubernetes. So there is this transformation to Kubernetes that's happening. And at the same time, as they do that, and as they increase the service connectivity among their services, they want to be able to take control of that connectivity, right? Abstract that away from the application teams so they can manage it from a central place. Uh, Kuma has been built to support this transition. So Kuma does not support just Kubernetes, but Kuma is a project that supports any architecture and any platform. It can run on virtual machines and it can support virtual machine-based workloads as well as it can support Kubernetes-based workloads. That's why we call it universal. Um, it can support the organization as they're making this transition to Kubernetes and to containers. And in a way, it simplifies that transition as well. If we can abstract away connectivity from brownfield applications that we want to transform into Kubernetes applications. We're reducing the scope of that transition in the first place because we don't have to manage that connectivity anymore. And so once we do that, effectively Kuma wants to enable an easier migration to Kubernetes. It's easy to use. Service mesh um, for many users out there has been a very complicated topic. Uh, service meshes are hard to deploy, they're hard to use, they're hard to extend. But it doesn't have to be that way. So we wanted, first and foremost, to create something that, would, that was easy to use, um, something that was lightweight, something that was extensible, something that didn't have many moving parts, so it would be easy to deploy, and something that would provide out of the box hooks to allow users to utilize the product, the project in different ways. Uh, we are obviously Kubernetes uh, CRDs um, to change the state on Kubernetes-based deployments, as well as providing an HTTP API out of the box, providing a CLI out of the box, as well as providing a GUI out of the box um, into the project. Kuma has been built to be simple, has been built to be scalable. Um, when working with uh, different kind of users, uh, what we've learned is that, especially in a large organization, it, service mesh doesn't just happen out of the box. It, it, like I said, it's a transition. And different teams are going to be moving to service mesh at different times, depending on their specific goals and roadmaps at the time. And so um, one very common way to support the entire organization and all the different lines of businesses and all the different teams that are building these apps, it is to create different meshes so that each team can provide a mesh for their own application and they can, uh, each mesh comes with its own dynamic certificate authority, but effectively, these different teams do not have to coordinate together within the same mesh in order to adopt mesh. Now, because this is a single control plane that can start as many meshes as we want, uh, Kuma is multi-tenant in this uh, case, um, from one control plane, we can provision as many meshes as we want. We can create this connectivity abstra abstraction layer that can, cr that can cross boundaries, can cross platforms, can cross even Kubernetes namespaces. And then it's up to the architect or to whoever is managing Kuma to determine if they want to merge different meshes together, if it makes sense, or if they want to keep them separate. Financial users in the financial industry um, that we are, uh, you know, that are using Kuma, they really like the idea that if they want to, they have this additional layer of separation uh, between uh, different teams and different applications. Some others, instead, they prefer to have a very large mesh and everything is being deployed within one mesh. The point is that Kuma supports both. So users who want to support Kubernetes, they can do that. Who want to support the virtual machines as part of that transition to Kubernetes, they can do that. They want to create one mesh, they can do that. They want to create multiple meshes, they still can do that. Um, in, 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 this, in this case, Kuma is a very pragmatic service mesh. Um, it, 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 and, and by the way, Kuma as a project itself, you know, Kong is not a cloud vendor. Um, the company that built Kuma 
uh, did not have any agenda other than trying to build the best control plane for service mesh out there. Uh, we don't build this to transition anybody to the cloud. We're not doing this because there is some other hidden agenda into Kong is the Switzerland of connectivity, if you wish. We, we work closely with all the clouds, all the platforms. So we don't have any other agenda other than creating the best product out there. And really, you can, uh, you can see this passion and, and this goal uh, within Kuma and the way Kuma has been built. Um, so it's easy to use. It's simple. We provide policies out of the box. Uh, we're going to be releasing uh, documentation. Uh, right now, you know, Kuma is a, a nine-month-old project, but we want to create documentation to make it even easier to create new policies um, on top of Kuma by perhaps supporting WebAssembly. Um, it's uh, horizontally scalable. There is only one moving part. It's multi-tenant. We can create as many meshes as we want. Runs on Kubernetes runs on virtual machines, runs across pretty much every cloud. It's easy to use. Uh, it provides native CRDs that allow anybody to follow Kubernetes best practices if, you, if they want to configure their mesh. Uh, policies can do pretty much anything. Policies can be, can be doing traffic control, fault injections, uh, traffic routing, mutual TLS. Uh, mutual TLS comes in different um, forms, in different uh, flavors. Uh, Kuma supports a built-in certificate authority. So we auto generate out of the box, the certificates and the keys uh, for the CA uh, root uh, backend. And then we auto generate a certificate for each data plane proxy. We implement out of the box things like certificate rotation. And of course, all of this is configurable. So the user can configure what certificate authority backend they want to use. They can also provide their own root certificate and key. Uh, and we built this entire system in such a way that it can be extended. So the, by default, the certificates that we create are SPIFI com compatible, um, but because this backend system is extensible as part of the roadmap, we would like to support, for example, Spire uh, as one of the CA backends that the users can use. Um, it provides a CLI that simplifies retrieving the state um, of the resources stored in Kuma. It provides an HTTP API that can be hooked with pretty much anything and the GUI itself is actually built on top of the HTTP API. So anything that the CLI can do, that the API can do, that the GUI can do, can also be done, um, you know, can also be automated by hooking into the HTTP API. We do not allow to change the state of the resources if Kuma is running on Kubernetes, because we want to use Kubernetes to do that. Uh, but if Kuma runs on virtual machines, then the API, the CLI, can also be used to change and apply state changes um, on top of Kuma. Um, like I said, uh, Kuma abstracts away uh, Envoy, actually. Um, so if we want to start using Kuma, we don't need to have any prior experience uh, on Envoy. Under the hood, there's going to be an Envoy proxy running, uh, but we bundle Envoy into this Kuma DP process that automatically does the initial bootstrap uh, configuration provisioning. So if, if somebody wants to use Kuma, um, under the hood, they're going to be using Envoy, but they have no, if they don't look into Kuma DP, they, they wouldn't know. Uh, this makes Envoy easier to deploy and easier to configure uh, because they don't need to know what Envoy is or how to configure Envoy in the first place. But if they want to go ahead and configure the low level Envoy configuration, they can still do that. Uh, we provide a proxy template policy where the user can effectively um, configure uh, the Envoy configuration for different services uh, via Kuma. So Kuma, first and foremost, is a control plane for Envoy, but then Kuma also provides policies that abstract away the most common features that Envoy provides in, into easy to use um, policies for, for the user. Um, it supports CNI, of course, because we want to be able to deploy Kuma on OpenShift, 3.x, 4.x, it supports Kubernetes. We have, uh, about nine different distributions that we generate for the community. Uh, we do also, by the way, work with the community. We have bi-weekly community calls. Kuma is an open governance project. Uh, bi-weekly community calls where we get their, gather their feedback and, um, and we collect input from the community. We also have a Slack channel and a development channel that uh, the community can contribute to. Uh, on, yeah. Question if I might, the, the, and it might just be, uh, semantics or the way that I think of a, a distribution. The, the different distributions, um, you know, put out to support those different platforms is, 
what are the primary differences between the distributions? We, we make it easier. So basically, um, Kuma on Kubernetes would uh, use the, Kuber the Kuma Docker container, obviously, uh, in order to be able to provision everything. But if you would like to run this on, let's say, uh, Red Hat, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Debian, uh, you would then start uh, the Golang uh, project um, without necessarily having to use a container. So if I go, you know, the best way to, to look into this, if I go on the website, kuma.io, um, and then, you know, we can click on the installation page. Uh, we see that on Kubernetes, uh, we provide, so first and foremost, on Kubernetes, we provide an automatic installer that would install Kuma. And then um, if you decided to use, for example, Amazon Linux, uh, we would provide the automatic installer would automatically detect that the op underlying operating system and it would install the Kuma CP binary executable on top of that virtual machine. So the difference is that with Kubernetes, we, we just abstract away the entire installation process. Installing Kuma is as easy as running Kuma Kato install, Kuma Kato install control plane, and then this would generate a YAML file that we can apply on Kubernetes. Whereas if you're running this somewhere else, you would get an executable, then, then you have to run. Got it, okay. Yep, but, the pro but, the, but the project and the binary is the same. So what, although we make it easier to install Kuma across these different distributions, it's not like there are different flavors of Kuma itself. That's always the same flavor. So basically every time we release a new version, we generate, um, installation instructions for the new version across all of these different distributions. But the, the binary, if you look into the Kubernetes container, or if you look into the Amazon Linux, the binary is always being, it's always the same. That's nice. Oh, very good. Yeah. And I think that the reason I was asking is it's, I think that those two concepts, flavors and distributions are often conflated. And so, um, yeah, was it in fact a different capability or, or but yeah, it's about, uh, it's about installation and kind of fitting into the environment, not, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, with OpenShift, for example, uh, we, we suggest using CNI, right? These, so basically we, um, you know, effectively each one of these distributions um, are distributions of the same project but with instructions that are catered to the specific environment where the user wants to, that the user wants to use. Nice. Um, you know, Kuma, you know, obviously with service mesh, there is some very common requirements when it comes to managing that service connectivity. Um, one of them, it's obviously being able to collect metrics. Another one, it's being able to implement mutual TLS. And then another one, it's being able to, um, you know, uh, fetch uh, tracing logs from all the service to service traffic that we are generating. Because Kuma wants to make this very simple for the user, uh, we implement also some uh, shortcuts that allow us to install Prometheus and Grafana in order to automatically out of the box capture those metrics. They also implement, uh, we implement a, a helper for installing Jaeger so that we can collect tracing. You know, we, we want to really make the entire service mesh experience extremely easy in order to be able to cater to a largest number, uh, a larger audience when it comes to adopting service mesh. Simplicity is a feature. Um, this is a simple example of a Kubernetes policy. So if I go back on the website, by the way, and I go on policies, we can see that there are some policies. Uh, you know, we generate new policies every time, but some of these policies, for example, like traffic route can be implemented on Kubernetes by uh, using this very simple configuration. So in this example, every request made by the backend service to the Redis service goes, um, some of that traffic goes to Redis, to the Redis service 5.0 5 and um, some other part of the traffic goes to service Redis 6.0. Now the cool thing is we can tag our services with any arbitrary tag. So which means that uh, we can assign um, a cloud region to a tag. We can uh, implement routing across different clouds, across different cloud regions. We do cross data center uh, routing. We can do all sorts of things with these tags. Tags allow us to, regardless of what's the underlying complexity of our workloads and where they're running, 
with tags, we can, uh, we can um, uh, apply policies in a very flexible way across the entire mesh. They're very powerful. And if we're running a universal, uh, because we want to you know, implement a service mesh on top of systems other than Kubernetes, because perhaps we want to integrate this with an existing mesh running on Kubernetes, uh, we do provide Kuma running as an um, individual executable. Of course, on Kubernetes, we can leverage the underlying Kubernetes API um, and etcd to store all of our configuration, but on virtual machines, we cannot make that assumption. Therefore, we have support for Postgres. So uh, if somebody wants to run Kuma um, on virtual machine uh, workloads, they can use Postgres as the underlying storage for their, for their uh, configuration. And, and the policies are very simple. As a matter of fact, one of the goals here is to make sure that we make it easier for teams that are not familiar with Kubernetes to get up and running with service mesh with something that it's very similar to Kubernetes, but not quite there yet. Uh, but it exposes them to the same concepts. And then as you can see, this is the universal policy example that does the same thing as I've demonstrated before with Kubernetes. It's quite simple and quite similar. So the idea is that the teams that are transitioning or planning to transition to Kubernetes, they can start abstracting away their connectivity by using something that really looks a lot like Kubernetes, but it's not quite Kubernetes, so it doesn't, doesn't scare them away, but makes their transition to Kubernetes much easier once they want to do that. Kuma uh, is open. It's community friendly. We have released an open governance, which I believe makes Kuma the only control plane built on top of Envoy uh, with open governance right now in the market, uh, in the entire community landscape. Uh, we provide bi-weekly, we set up a bi-weekly community calls. The next one is next week, uh, where we discuss with the community. Uh, we have an, a list of agenda topics that you usually discuss, but you know, it's roadmap or particular uh, spikes or architectural conversations and so on. And, um, and this is the first Envoy-based control plane that is being donated uh, for service mesh that is being donated um, to, to CNCF, as far as I know. The velocity of the project, it's quite high. Uh, we're making uh, uh, releases uh, pretty much every month or almost every month. Uh, we want to keep iterating on introducing more Kuma policies to make Envoy easier to use. We want to be exposing those Envoy features um, via native Kuma policies. One of the most requested features right now is to support SMI integration. So this is something that I would like to explore perhaps with the SMI team, the Microsoft team, um, uh, and the maintainers of SMI, introducing support for WebAssembly, which as you know, Envoy already supports, as well as pluggable MTLS backends, we've built that, uh, the GUI wizards to get up and running with the GUI, we, we built that, you know, and so on and so forth. Today, Kuma is being used by uh, a series of users uh, across the board. Um, uh, we're using, uh, Kuma is being used by, um, for example, companies like Sabre, uh, enterprise companies like Sabre, financial institutions in New York, uh, government agencies, um, financial companies in Europe, uh, in the UK, as well as I know there is many projects led by Talworks and the companies like Wipro uh, around Kuma. And those guys are active in our Slack channel. And, um, and, and community channels as well. So this is a presentation to donate Kuma, which is the first Envoy-based control plane to be donated to the community to advance the adoption of Service Mesh and Envoy. Kuma supports and enables those cloud native uh, technologies and best practices. Uh, we want to enable the adoption of Kubernetes across the board, and we want to be able to make that transition as easy as possible for those users or organizations that are transitioning to Kubernetes, but they're not there yet. It's a journey. So how can we enable the journey and make it easier for them to, to do that journey? Um, like I said, uh, we built Kuma with no other agenda and, and no other plan other than uh, building the best control plan for service mesh out there. I mean, uh, if, if we look at the features and the roadmap, it's entirely focused on advancing service mesh on advancing the adoption of Envoy and also advancing the adoption of the integrations that we natively provide uh, with Kuma. That includes Prometheus, that includes Jaeger. Uh, we integrate with CNI when it comes to OpenShift and perhaps there is some other, some other ones that, that we're integrating with when it comes to our policies. Um, it has been originally designed by Kong. Kong is a neutral player in, um, in the, as you know, in the very opinionated cloud landscape. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, this can be entirely used um, 
on any any platform, any architecture with, with no de cloud dependency at all whatsoever. Um, it can be deployed in, uh, in pretty much any, any use case and, and there is nothing that would prevent any user from, from deploying a service mesh that's non-opinionated using Kuma in their own environment. If you want to learn more, um, we provide the official website at kuma.io. Uh, the repository is Kuma, Kuma GUI, Kuma website. There is a Slack chat that um, uh, we provide as well. And the Twitter, uh, Kuma Mesh, at Kuma Mesh handle is where we announce our releases. So we just announced at 0.5. It was quite exciting with 30 more features uh, that the community has been build, building. And uh, we're going to be planning to release a 0.1 release uh, sometime this month. We're going to be discussing this in the community call, as well as we plan the next major one to show up sometime in June or July. Nice. Oh, very good. Oh, thank you for this, Marco. This is, this is nice. I uh, was just uh, trying to pull up the pull request to, on some of this, because some, some of these questions, answers might be in there, but the, oh, uh, yep, yeah, and it is. So current maintainers are uh, uh, yourself, Ilya, Jacob, um, all three of you are, are at Kong or of Kong, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, so we have some other users that have been contributing um, quite actively into the project. Uh, one of them, for example, comes to TallWorks and, and those users are in the process. Uh, they could be potential candidates to be additional maintainers to the project. Uh, we have introduced open governance, which creates a guideline to become a maintainer sometime like uh, three, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. So open governance is new for Kuma, but we did that in preparation for this donation to Sandbox. So we, we, we just have started and we're willing to accept new contributions and new maintainers and the guidelines are out there published for everybody to, to see. Nice, uh, that's good. Uh, here's, a, here's a question. Um, considering the, well, just, all right, here's one you've maybe fielded in the past, but um, so, so Envoy, you know, great choice for a proxy uh, underneath the, this control plane, Kuma. Um, given the experience that you guys have with, with the maintainers have with Nginx, curious as to, uh, you know, why not Nginx? For the same reason, uh, because, we have, uh, because we have lots of experience with Nginx, uh, we also know the limitations of the products and we also know what was the intended use of Nginx and what is the intended use of Envoy. And Envoy really provides a nicer dynamic API, which as you know, Nginx does not provide, to be able to dynamically change the state of, um, on, on how the proxy is going to be managing those network requests, those service requests. In, in such a way that Nginx cannot provide without some very messy reloads, you know, of the entire process. Um, also, I am um, a big fan of Envoy. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the sponsors for the Kuma donation sandbox is Matt Klein. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Envoy. Uh, we have in the past also contributed to Envoy, upstream Envoy, uh, and we plan to keep doing so when it comes to Kuma. Uh, quite frankly, we want to use the best, the best tool for the job. And, and Envoy has lots of momentum right now. The kind of policies that it provides and the kind of filters that it provides are very suitable for the kind of goals that Kuma and Service Mesh in general want to achieve. Therefore, it felt like a natural fit. Very good. Uh, questions from, from others on the call? By the way, the, uh, Marco, great, I think I said it before, great presentation. This is, this is good, you know, cool. great project too. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I love the simplicity uh, uh, motto. And kind of, uh, it's pretty pervasive throughout the various things you highlighted in the project, which is, yeah, networking is hard enough. <laughs> and so, yeah, simplifying is always needed. Uh, kudos on your new logo as well, kind of the, the redesign. Kind of, you, you can see the resemblance between the old one and the new one, but, but yeah. 
Yeah, the old one, uh, the old one, the old logo was uh, a little bit problematic uh, when it came. When it, so the old logo was created very quickly prior to releasing the project uh, in, back in September. And it was very problematic to, it, it was very problematic in different ways. But, but basically this, the new one, um, it's more recognizable um, and it's smoother and it's nicer. And I think it's a better foundation for the long term. Plus, logos uh, are hard. Oh my God, don't tell me. <laughs> they are. Uh, I, I didn't come up with, with the logo. Th thankfully, we have, uh, you know, somebody has contributed to the design of the logo, somebody, somebody who's more creative than I am. <laughs> um, but, but this new logo was also created uh, in preparation for the donation uh, to CNCF. We did not want so to me, it's very important to clarify this point. Um, I don't want to leverage this donation to CNCF um, as, um, as something that would make the old logo and Kong at Inc. the company more recognizable in the marketplace. I wanted to create a distinction, a separation between the old and the new. And so creating a new logo is, it has, been, has been done also to give a, fre a fresher and better look to Kuma in preparation for the CNCF donation. Right, so something that basically breaks any association with the past and projects Kuma into the future. So one comment I'll make about the logo, and, and please just take this as a take it or leave it suggestion. Uh, my experience has been the CNCF creative services team is unbelievably good. I mean, you literally see the result right behind my head. Um, <laughs> and so not that this is something you do or don't have to do, um, but they are just really, really good. Um, that said, Apparently, it's particularly stressful for them when you take feedback from 30 or 40 community members at the same time. So you might want to rate limit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is um, of course, I, of course, this I can help wrangle um, uh, like the uh, various uh, community feedback pieces around logos as we get there. So, pray continue. Yeah, as part of the donation, um, you know, we, I, I had a chat with Chris. Uh, Chris sent me all the documentation and materials. Obviously, we're going to be transferring the trademarks, the IPs, you know, all, all of all, all of that. All, all that we have to transfer is going to be then uh, part part of uh, ownership of CNCF, right? So, including all of these efforts and so on and so forth. So, at that point, CNCF can do pretty much what they want with it. Um, I got uh, Marco. That was one of the questions that I had had, kind of uh, da dangling in the back of my mind. But but you you'd spoken, I think, in part to it, and that is, I guess, maybe to phrase it a little bit differently, but just um, uh, the association to Kong and, and maybe the the business model that, um, around Kuma, or you know, how how does it become a, a self sustaining thing? Yeah. So you know, we we provide like you know, many, many other organizations are out there. Uh, we provide support uh, if enterprise customers wants to deploy Kuma, wants to run Kuma, as well as I don't exclude in the future to also have a cloud version of Kuma. So if, if somebody wants to run Kuma by themselves, the control plane, for example, they can do that. Uh, if, if they would rather have a simpler way to deploy the, pro the, pro the project, then perhaps they can go to Kong or to quite frankly, anybody who decides to create a cloud version of Kuma, right? So it, it can be Kong, it can be something else at that point. Uh, but we want to first and foremost, um, enhance and integrate um, our, you know, our core business is the gateway. Uh, it's not Kuma. So we want to integrate our, our, our gateway uh, project and product into a service mesh that's open, that's neutral, that's easy to use, that's agnostic. And that's why we have created Kuma in the first place. And that's why we want to release it. We, Kong Inc., the company, doesn't run a service mesh business, uh, runs an API management business. That, that is our business. So uh, Kuma is, is something that, from a business standpoint, provides uh, uh, a vendor neutral integration to, uh, to our gateway. But the service mesh per se, we want it to be neutral, we want it to be open. And if, as a matter of fact, we're open to get other maintainers. And if anybody wants to build or offer something on top of Kuma, because of it's open and vendor neutral, they will certainly be able to do that. Nice, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, other... and, and, because, and because, and I wanted to add, just because this is not our business, we have also, that, that's one of the reasons why there is no other agenda with Kuma uh, that, that you can see in the product or by using the product 
other than creating a service mesh out there that anybody can use. And so um, that's simple, that's agnostic, that's multi-tenant, you know, all things that other service meshes out there do not have. As well as we're making some significant effort to make sure that we can support more complex network topologies when it comes to deploying Kuma across, um, you know, larger and more complex use cases in, in such a way that existing service meshes out there, uh, including some of the most popular ones, cannot support. And so we're, we're very excited about the roadmap and the things that we're doing. And, and we believe that, um, you know, we, we believe that we, we're doing a good job into listening to our users and, 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 and trying to do something that's simple and pragmatic for them, you know. Um, very good. Um, questions from, from others? Um, Marco, one of the things that, that you, you'd mentioned a couple of times are, are users um, curious and the feedback that you're um, tuning into and, and it's helping drive part of the roadmap for the project. Um, I guess there's kind of two questions in there. One being that you were speaking, you were alluding to and kind of speaking to on one of the last slides, uh, part of the intended roadmap. And, and I thought I'd ask, is that, uh, is that public as well? I mean, it's public in the slides, but I mean, is that available somewhere else? Yeah, so we are making, uh, we're transitioning everything to GitHub, uh, including um, GitHub as a feature like Trello, um, you know, um, it's called projects. So obviously we're transitioning everything there. And if, if you go on the GitHub, everything is public. Everything is uh, um, available on the repository, as well as we discuss roadmap items two times a month in the bi-weekly community calls. So uh, there is also a Slack chat, a chat channel on Akuma called uh, Development, where uh, folks can suggest or talk about roadmap items that they want to work on. So um, everything is quite open and it's out there. Nice, nice, very good. I see the project boards now. Um, yeah, yeah. So we, we, started, we started with that effort. Of course, you know, there's <laughs> lots of work to do and it can always be better, right? But, um, but, uh, that's, but that's exactly the goal. But you guys should, uh, yeah, just in, in many different respects, um, moving right along briskly, or just, you know, um, good looking, healthy, a healthy shape to the project, I guess is what I would say. The, the uh, other part of the question that I didn't ask was, oh, uh, about users and uh, uh, you, the, you guys, you know, the project tuning into their feedback. C curious, um, you'd mentioned uh, ThoughtWorks or a couple of other, um, any, I guess the, the question I'm trying to ask is, uh, what have you, you know, what are some of those things that you learned from your Kuma users and or are there any kind of, kind of references to adopters today? Um, this isn't, this, some of the, by the way, Marco, some of the questions that I'm uh, tossing toward, toward you and toward the other maintainers are not necessarily strict criteria for the sandbox, but these are just, uh, you know, general questions yeah but those are very good questions i mean the the, the uh, idea that we have uh, you know of of kuma in cncf it's not of a project that stops at sandbox but keeps going growing from there so um as a, in my slides you can imagine uh so i i presented my slides and you know obviously there is a quote from telus uh which is the largest telecommunication company in in canada we are also working on a community use case uh, with uh, an enterprise uh, ticketing company that's been using Kuma to fundamentally transform how they're transitioning to microservices and Kubernetes. And we are actually um, um, going to be releasing that community case study uh, on the website. So we're, you know, for some of, for some of these uh, case studies, uh, where we have to ask uh, approval, we can draft them out and then we have to ask approval to their legal team if they want us to publish them. If not, we are going to just publish them in an anonymized form. But basically, uh, we're going to be creating more of these case studies so that other users can learn how they are using Kuma. And, and fundamentally, you know, one of the biggest feedbacks that we hear is, fine, you know, 
we want to create a service mesh, but service mesh is a pattern. It's not an implementation. So why couldn't we implement a service mesh that can span across the entire org if we wanted to do so, right? And that's a very valid question. It doesn't have to be Kubernetes only. As a matter of fact, there's lots of value in making a service mesh that's as big as, as it can be across different lines of businesses or different you know, teams within the organization. And as we do that, one of the other questions is, how do we do that without having to create a hundred clusters of service mesh, but perhaps having everything into, into one place? If you know, if you use other service mesh control planes, you have to create a new cluster for each service mesh that you want to support. Uh, if you want to support different teams or different applications with different service meshes at different times. Whereas with Kuma, we capture that feedback and in Kuma, we implement multi-tenancy. So we have this concept of a mesh object. You can create as many meshes as you want and each one of them has its own certificate authority backend that the user can configure, but effectively they're being provisioned different data plane proxy certificates, which for all intents and purposes makes them become different meshes. And the policies that we apply traffic permission, traffic routing, traffic logging, traffic tracing, you name it, all of those policies can also be applied, um, can also be applied on a per mesh basis. So yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to understate how important what you just said is. Um, because what, what so many people have missed, not in all kinds of spaces, but this is one, is the fact that there is not going to be a single point of administrative control. That's, that's silly. What you're going to have is a whole bunch of points of administrative control uh, that are going to need to be able to operate independent of one another. Yeah, and, and this decision has been made quite early um, into the journey of Kuma because we didn't have to learn it. We knew that that's exactly what they wanted uh, because they were telling us, you know, if you're building a service mesh, build it in such a way that the operational cost of supporting the entire org doesn't, it's all of one, not all of N, the more and N equals the teams or the meshes or the applications that we want to support. Um, therefore, we believe that with Kuma, we made something that's extremely easy to operate um, and can scale quite well across pretty much the entire organization uh, in, a, in a very nicely way, clean way. And plus, you know, because everything is into one, at the end of the day, all of this is being provided by one cluster of Kuma, one control plane. Then, you know, it also provides this bird's eye view on how many meshes are running in the organization and is it time to merge some of them, you know, together or, you know, what's the relationship among them. So it, it also gives a better control on how that segmentation is being applied across the entire org. All of this, what I'm very excited about all of this is that all of this is being powered by Envoy, uh, which is just amazing. So if anything, you know, by allowing to create these meshes, allowing to uh, simplify how all of this is being done, we advance the adoption of Envoy across pretty much every, every single team, every single line of business. And that's why I'm very excited to not only work more closely with, uh, with the Envoy community to build things that we need, as well as I'm very excited to um, I really believe that that Envoy is a, a pretty sweet technology that, uh, you know, uh, it is going to be the data plane of the future. You know, when we look at the data planes and when we look at anything in life uh, and we ask ourselves, is the best time of this thing ahead of us or in the past? And then when I look at Envoy, the answer to that question is the best times are yet to come, right? And so I'm very excited about Envoy and, and, what, and what the Envoy community has been building. And so with Kuma and Envoy, I want to energize this cooperation uh, to promote a better adoption of Envoy across the board. Nice, nice. Uh, comments from others? Plus, I have to say, Kuma comes with no drama attached. This is a no drama project. Uh, and, and I know that in our industry, we, we, we have enough of that already. Like I said, this is vendor neutral. Um, there's no other agenda rather than building the best service mesh control plane um, out there. It supports Envoy. It comes with no drama. Uh, there, is no, there is no strategic plan other than creating the best product. Product obsession is, is uh, one, one of the requirements for any maintainer in Kuma and demonstrate that product obsession uh, over time, right? With, with continuous improvements and, and, and contributions. So, 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 so if there's no drama, does that mean you're promising comedy? Excuse me? 
if there's no drama, does that mean that you're promising comedy? <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 prom I'm promising a, a, a very collaborative environment that's, that uh, it, it's, it's not driven by anything other than let, let's do something that's nice and that the entire world can use. Uh, very yep. product oriented and product centric. It doesn't hook into any greater plan but, but that, I mean, it's really, that's what it is. We're a bunch of people doing something that we like doing, working on something that we like working on. Uh, and, and we find, we find pride into uh, the adoption that Envoy has within the community and the user base. And, and we're, you know, we, we want to keep it that way. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that kind, of, uh, that kind of thing is hard to quantify, although, uh, can be extraordinarily apparent in various communities. Um, some of the some of those that were mentioned on this call, actually. Um, fair enough. Maybe last call for for comments from others uh, while I tie off here to say. Well, one. I guess let me pause and say. Any other comments from from folks? Nice. Uh, well, uh, Nikolai, Marco, Nick, Nikolai, I guess I'm just, I'm used to seeing the NSM logo behind your, but, uh, I'll get, <laughs> <laughs> I'll adapt. I'll, uh, <laughs> so that's so great. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation today, guys. We will, um, uh, reach reach out and spend a, a bit more time. We'll do a, a, a review and, and hopefully um, uh, akin to the cadence that we delivered for SMI and for Chaos Mesh, um, also come out with a, a review of, of Kuma. And yeah, I guess I'd said it before, but yeah, what, what a good looking um, project you guys have got um, thus far. So this is, I'm particularly pumped uh, personally about it. So. Yes, thank you, Lee, and thank, thank you. you, everybody. Um, and if anybody wants to join the next community call, uh, Nikolai, I believe that is next Wednesday, right? Yep, it is. Um, is it uh, 8 a.m. Pacific? Yeah, so you can get uh, more details ar around that if you go on kuma.io slash community. Um, if you do that, there is a field uh, that, um, you know, you enter your mail and it will create an event, uh, a Google Calendar event that you can then um, you can then say, of course, and then I hope to see you there. Nice. All right. Very good. That, that was, uh, that's the last item on today's agenda. So we'll, we'll convene or, uh, wrap up a little bit early. Um, thank you guys. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll reach out. We'll, we'll have some, some more conversations. This is, this is good. All right. Thank you. See you. Thanks, thank you. Bye-bye.